The river valley of the Foyle and the island of Derry and surrounding hills were formed by glacial action during the Ice Age. As the ice melted, the lower ground was flooded to well above the present waterline. Much of the present low-lying land around the city was submerged and the Bogside Valley was underwater. The hill of Dura would have been a true island. At about this time, the trees which were to be such an important part of the history of the island took root. The oak woods of Derry were established. The first people arrived along the shores of the Foyle around 7000 BC. The Celts arrived from Central Europe from 400 BC, bringing with them their trades of stone building and metal working. They venerated sacred places. Dura, the Oak Grove, was such a place. During the Celtic era, the region was ruled by the O'Neill clan. In 546, Dura was given as a gift to Colum Kill from his kinsmen. He established a Christian community there and built a stone church above the cliff. During the early Middle Ages, Dura grew into a small town with a Celtic monastic community known as the Cayley J, Friends of God. During the 9th and 10th centuries, Norsemen invaded the site on many occasions. At this time, the Long Tower was built as a lookout bell tower to warn of their approach. In 1162, in response to repeated disputes and acts of violence, it was decided to separate the secular and ecclesiastical buildings. Eighty houses were demolished and removed. A stone wall was built to separate the monastery from any secular building. The cathedral, Temple Moor, was built on the site of the present-day Long Tower Church. By 1500, Thurra Column Kill was a fortified town with three stone churches. It was surrounded by a defensive wall. The town was taken by an invading English force in 1567. An explosion in their gunpowder magazine destroyed many of the buildings. They abandoned the settlement within the year and the Irish returned. In 1600, the English returned. Sir Henry Docker arrived with 3,000 soldiers and took Dura without any resistance. Over the next few months, they repaired the walls, knocked down the cathedral and another church and took over the ancient church for their own worship. They decided to build a new defensive wall, extending the town down to the river and closing 215 houses. By 1625, a ship quay was built extending 300 feet out into the river. With financial help from London companies, the new town was built along classical lines and the city was renamed Londonderry. By 1689, the settlement had grown. Houses were built outside the walls on the bog side and on the fountain, and the ship quay was extended by further landfill reclamation. By 1776, extensive reclamation was continuing. A stone road was made to Pennyburn Mill and to connect to the road to Greencastle. The Merry Blue Burn flowed to a polluted outlet at present-day Waterloo Place. In 1799, the quays were extended out to the deep channel to permit large ships to dock. New buildings, warehouses, breweries, shipbuilding yards were built all along the docks. By 1835, there was a massive reclamation by landfill along the north side of the river, filling in to make the present day Strand Road, Waterloo Place, Lower William Street, Great James's Street, Queen Street. Clarendon Street. On the waterside, extensive new docks were built on newly reclaimed land. The city was equipped to benefit from the Industrial Revolution. New industries, shirt making, shipbuilding, distilling, ironworks, import and export businesses were established. By the end of the 19th century, the city reached its maximum activity with the docks fully active, shipping goods, people and animals and with 38 shirt factories employing 80,000 people. The city had experienced an economic boom since the 1860s, but at the beginning of the 20th century, decline was setting in. Business at the port dropped off sharply as transatlantic trade declined. The First World War brought a temporary boom for the city's industries. 
the shipyard reopened, and there were plenty of jobs and relatively high wages. By 1920, men began to lose jobs, and the wages of the women in the shirt factories began to fall. There followed the economic depression of the 1920s and 1930s, followed by another bout of prosperity during the Second World War. The underlying economic, social and political difficulties came into the open after 1950. Poor housing, unemployment, discrimination in employment and in political representation all compi combined to create a great sense of unrest. In 1969, it exploded, and for the next 30 years, there was civil unrest, violence was widespread. At the same time, the physical appearance of the city was being transformed. From the 1970s, a massive demolition program was undertaken. Hundreds of old buildings, streets, the complete docklands, and two railways disappeared. Under the direction and control of the housing executive, the housing stock was completely renewed, and new housing estates were built. Social provision was greatly improved in health with the building of Alton Galvin Hospital and many new local clinics. Education has been transformed to provide state-of-the-art schools and colleges for all levels and age groups. The reclamation of the river continued outwards to accommodate the new road system. By 2004, there were many new developments, government buildings, private shopping malls and new low-density housing in the fountain and bog side. There have been gains and losses. During these years, the central city has been stripped of its industrial function. Much investment and work has been put in to upgrade the historic centre, to create a heritage city whose function will mainly be to cater for tourists. This is important and will provide much needed employment in the future.